lately I've been wanting to feel sexy in my body. Mm -hmm. And I don't even totally know what that means. I asked Sean, I was like, what do you think it means when I say this? Because I don't know what I mean exactly. It's not like I'm necessarily thinking about sex when I say sexy, but there's this kind of confidence that I'm picturing Mm -hmm. for women who just seem very comfortable in their bodies and very like maybe aware that they're desirable. Yeah, It's this sense that like, well, of course you like what you see. Yeah. It's a very likable shape. And I I have met women, specifically when I lived in Spain, I was struck by older women. They they swim a lot like in the nude or topless at the ocean and just their like confidence like around each other. And it's they didn't have the same body as Haley Bieber. Mm-hmm. They had an older Spanish woman body. Their way though was like a, a real confident mm-hmm. like, oh, of course people like what they see. Like, who wouldn't? We all like look at us. Yeah. And I don't have that inside of me. This is another like full disclosure intro. We we're recording two episodes today. Oh, that's why I'm wearing then, the same outfit. In, yeah, I changed, so be tricked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in between, we started to have a oh, whole juicy ass conversation and then we're like wait stop the presses turn everything on yeah so you're sort of catching us mid thought but we'll take you back to the beginning Mm -hmm. but welcome back to another episode we're so happy you're here (laughs) i'm still wearing pink on pink yeah that's jess hi oh sorry hi (laughs) i'm jess i'm really excited you're here jessica hover this is my friend lane Mm -hmm. i'm lane dealing churland and this is very good enough a podcast from very good mothers club we're gonna jump back into the body image conversation Mm -hmm. We recorded an episode like a year ago, maybe Mm -hmm. a little more than a year ago even, about this. And I will link that in the show notes if you guys Mm want to go um, track our growth (laughs) or not (laughs) because it just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. It's just like not a conversation that goes away Mm -hmm. and we're only older than we were last time we talked about it and we're only still women and still people. And, And Jess is on the other side of an internet like wasp storm around the fact that she wanted her own face to look the way that she wants her own face to look. And other people think that they get to tell her about that. Yeah. And uh, we're all mad. So yeah, we, we are staying mad. <laughs> That's that. funny. That's funny that you bring that up because I wasn't even tracking. Basically what I wanted to say something here is that I don't love the way we do this thing on the internet where we talk badly about people to them in their comment section Mm -hmm. as if like that's that's what people do like we're just allowed to comment on other people's bodies and choices and like Mm -hmm. I don't like that you look uglier now like obviously that that's just going to keep happening I can say this in a podcast and it's just going to continue happening but I (laughs) it's going to remain timely no matter when the podcast episode but I was actually feeling um, offended on behalf of Taylor Swift. And I don't even have strong feelings about Taylor Swift, um, in any way. I think, uh, I respect her career, but like, I wasn't like a Swifty and I've never been a Swifty. I've actually listened to more of her music in the last year because my eight-year-old likes her music. And now my two toddlers really like her music too. Um, Jules is like, do you like Cruel Summer? Mm. (laughs) I'm like, sure. Yeah, I do now, guys. Taylor Swift Taylor Swift. (laughs) She's funny. (laughs) Did you know Taylor Swift doesn't like Justin Bevel? I was like, (laughs) I didn't know that. Um, But I was seeing people posting about her new like album cover Mm -hmm. um, and being like, this is so scandalous, which by the way, I went and looked at it and I would just have to say that it is uh, very (laughs) unscandalous compared to the other thing. She's, I think she's laying back on like, uh, she's wearing like black on black. And it was like, if you, how would you feel if your daughter posted this? I was like, if my daughter in her 30s is posting, she's not somebody's daughter anymore. She's a grown up. Get off her. (laughs) Obviously, she still has parents, but it's not like this is somebody's little girl. Like, this is a grown up. That's what I'm thinking. And like, yeah. And just even if I, even if I was looking at it, it was like, I don't know how I feel about that. There's plenty of stuff that I look at and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. I don't know. This isn't my st- look. She has clothes on. Thank she has like little you. shorts on. Like you can't even see her butt. You can't see her. She never shows us her boobs. Like Taylor Swift right. doesn't show us her body. Right. And in this album cover, she's not showing us her body. Yeah. <laughs> like 
Yeah. So like what? And it's and it's okay. We have a variety of people listening to this. I'm not saying we all need to look at this and what? love it or something. The thing that rubbed me wrong was just how many people were talking about it as if it was like really horrible. Um, and it happened to be this one like thread I was looking at. But I just – then if you ever go look at like Hailey Bieber, for example, I uh, really – I have a love for her um, and I have met her and I've been around her and I've known her since she was 17 and people are insanely mean to her oh my God. and she's wildly successful and she's married to Justin Bieber. Um, I'm not saying you need to sit around and feel bad for Haley. I'm sure she's sure. living a good life and she's a confident girl. No, but, but it's, a comment, it's a comment on how we behave toward women that we can thank see. Thank you. It's not about like yes. whether or not those people are suffering yeah. enough for us yeah. to feel bad for them. It's like, no, no, yeah. not them. You all, us all, what are yes. we doing out here in this yes. crowd toward women yes. just because we can see yes. them? And, I mean, Haley wears less clothes than those and that's – This is – Taylor Swift has a whole, sh- whole shirt on. Yes, thank you. a whole shirt yeah. on and some little yeah. shorts. Yeah. So, but actually the things that people were saying to Haley that I was looking at was just it, – it's just like pretty straight up evil. Like people Aww. are just really brutal. But I think we could take any female celebrity for sure. I probably true about men, um, but not at, not to the extent and specifically not about their bodies. Yeah. The body stuff is really crazy or yeah. their skin or their face. Like there's just this weird thing where we think it's fine to talk badly about people's – once they get to a certain following point maybe, maybe if you have a – if it's like just friends and family, like people wouldn't do that. I don't know. Um, but I mean, people do it in like like sitting in a circle of grown up women as like a little tiny child. Mm. Like one of them would get up and leave, and mm. the other ones would be like, "Did you see her? Whatever." Right, like, right. This, this is not an girl internet. thing. It's yes. just you can see it really big on the internet because people are like writing it down. Yes, and we can all see each other. Yes, but the thing of parsing one another's bodies. Mm-hmm is uh, that mm-hmm. happens yes. interpersonally. Like that happens yeah. at every level. Yeah. And then no wonder we would begin a conversation about this topic before even this goes on, before we're even recording for you podcast friends. And Lane would start talking about the pressure she feels in her own mind mm-hmm. to be a certain shape. Yeah. And of course, that's the the world we live in, the movies we've watched probably for as long as we've watched movies and the messages we've received from the larger population and and it goes beyond it goes to the messaging our moms received and the messaging that their moms received and so it's a really it's a really big mountain to climb mm-hmm. to decide I'm going to feel good in my body. Yeah. Even I said at the intro of Quigley's episode, whenever that came out, I talked about how like lately I've been wanting to feel sexy in my body. Mm-hmm. And I don't even totally know what that means. I asked Sean, I was like, what do you think it means when I say this? Because I don't know what I mean exactly. Yeah. It's not like I I am I – don't, I don't know that I'm necessarily thinking about sex when I say sexy, but there's this – kind of confidence that I'm picturing mm-hmm. for women who just seem very comfortable in their bodies yeah. and very like, I mean, maybe aware that they're desirable. Yeah. And it's not like they're going around like trying to get you to make a move or something, right. but it's this sense that like, well, of course you like what you see. Yeah. It's a very likable shape. And I, I have met women, specifically when I lived in Spain, I was struck by Older women, they they swim a lot like in the nude or topless at the ocean and we lived by the ocean um, and and just their like confidence like around each other and it's – they didn't have the same body as Haley Bieber. Mm-hmm. They had an older Spanish woman body who looked like an older Spanish woman in a swimsuit and their way though was like a, a real confident mm-hmm. like, oh, of course people like what they see. Like – who wouldn't? We all like look at us. Yeah. And I don't have that inside of me. I have yeah. um, my natural, most honest view is much more like maybe like timid, like a little insecure about my shape. And I, I certainly have it where when I look in the mirror, my eyes are going to go straight to the things about me that I think are the same place I think your eyes go. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm I know you enough to know that that's probably not true. I know that when I look at Lane, I look at beauty. And when she looks at herself, she probably isn't looking. I know this because I've talked to you about it. I'm not just (laughs) putting this on you. Uh But like you would describe to me or you have in the past described to me some of your insecurities. And I didn't even know 
that was a thing about you mm. to notice mm -hmm. the, the specific details you talked about, right? Mm -hmm. So that whole challenge of being a woman and wanting to live inside our body and, and then the tension of like, well, I'd like to be more fit or I'd like to be a different weight or I'd like my muscles to be more toned. All of that can be fine. Right. The struggle becomes – I will be happy when mm -hmm. I am these things. I will be successful. I will be loved when I am this pant size mm -hmm. or this number on a scale. Yeah. And really trying to overcome like, okay, I'm going to exercise today, not because I'm mad at myself, mm -hmm. not because I'm punishing myself for the thing that I ate. Mm -hmm. I will be exercising today because I am worthy of movement. And when I move, it's good for my brain. And as I take good care of this body, it will be the shape that it needs to be. Oh, that takes so much more effort to think along yeah. those lines. And it's, uh, I would say it's been one of the bigger struggles of my whole life. Mm -hmm. For me, when I was younger, I thought like, if I will be beautiful, then I will be successful yes. provided for because I had this equation that was like, well, the beautiful girls who wasn't me, I didn't count myself as one of them. I just thought if I could become one of right. them, those girls over there mm -hmm. are happy and yeah. successful. And I even like, I think my face is pretty and mm -hmm. I'm like happy with my hair. And mm -hmm. like, as a young person was like, no, I think I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. I specifically think that, but if I was skinny mm -hmm. also, but mm -hmm. if I was like, really skinny, mm -hmm. like skinny, skinny, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, then like, like hungry, <laughs> even, yeah, like I, I just all, all to emphasize that sure. like the weight piece of it yeah. is not even like, even if I could be like, no, if I'm like pretty enough, like it's mm -hmm. fine. The weight but piece if has I been such a struggle. Skinny. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. if I could just be small, if there was just mm -hmm. less of my body in the places that there was, that I want there to be less. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really, this is where the conversation came from was being mm -hmm. like, no, I like, I don't think in my brain, like I don't think the thoughts, like I don't agree with the idea that if I was thinner, then I would be successful. Mm -hmm. But like if I am to look at the way that my emotional responses mm -hmm. are to my body, mm -hmm. it's clear that I believe mm -hmm. that if I lost weight, mm -hmm. I would then be successful. Yeah. Like there's a clear connection somewhere, somewhere right. deep down there in right. like – and when I envision myself as successful in these other places, in that picture, I also am thinner. Wow. Like yeah. that that just is something that has to be confessed because mm -hmm. I don't actually think that that's true. Sure. Yeah, that's – But – Yeah, that's what made to, this to become stock. a podcast episode because <laughs> yes. I was like, yes, it's I think so many of us that have that. I do that. think that. Mm -hmm. Then I – but it's not even it's, – it's more sinister. It's darker. It's darker mm -hmm. than just success, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there are certain places that my body has accumulated fat that make me think that I – that it's like – not allowed. Mm. That's it's not allowed to be that way. I'm mm -hmm. outside of what's allowed mm. because of this shape, this piece of cellulite here, these stretch marks, this softness. Mm -hmm. When I put on pants, it's round here where it shouldn't be, mm. where it shouldn't be. Because mm -hmm. there's a there's a should mm -hmm. to it, and it's like a qualifier. Like mm -hmm. and I'm probably not actually qualified for the things that I to like live the life I want or be successful or be or whatever. I'm not sure what the thing is, mm -hmm. but there's something that I'm not allowed to have. Yeah, that if I could be like the ones who are okay, like mm -hmm. they are what you should be, then I would be included in something that I'm excluded from. There's like something. Yeah something disqualifying mm -hmm. about the way that – about this this fat that's yeah. on my body. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not even like, oh, if I looked really strong. Like mm -hmm. it's no. – I can I can say yeah. that. That's like a pretend version mm -hmm. and I, not for everyone. I'm sure there yeah, are some no, people who not. are actually pursuing strength. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just confessing my own dark – Yeah. Wherever, wherever mm -hmm. this stuff came from that got mm -hmm. passed down since forever. Let's be clear. Also, it got passed down since the time when women's bodies actually were a property that was mm -hmm. like bought, sold, traded in marriage. Like mm -hmm. there, it's, this is left over from being mm -hmm. objectified at the level of actual object. Yeah. You know, like women are for a purpose for you. They're going to run mm -hmm. your home. They're going to have mm -hmm. your children. It doesn't matter if you've met them. It doesn't matter if you've liked them. It doesn't matter what they look like. Like this is commodity. Mm -hmm. So like we're, we're experiencing the hopefully like last little vestigial mm. wisps is mm -hmm. me being like, I don't know, I'm I'm not valuable mm -hmm. at – there's some level of value that I don't imagine myself at mm -hmm. is from actually like 
but that's long still lines of that's like still pricing. Exists. That still exists because I worked in fashion and I, I watched it play out and it still plays out. And I think we now 2024 is a lot better of a time for the fashion world. It's about to be mm. New York Fashion Week. You'll see models on the runways who are much more diverse in sizing. But even so, there's like standards for how the shape can be mm-hmm. and like there needs to be this amount of bust versus this amount of waist right. and it's still very like in order to make this amount of money yeah. and be put on this billboard or this ad it all needs to look a certain way mm-hmm. and it's the same it's the same exact idea is a woman will be worth more quite literally mm-hmm or can be worth more because it doesn't actually equate in everything, but specifically in the world of like modeling or any sort of kind of media, yeah, she will make more money if she has the body that makes money. Yeah. Yeah. And can we talk about the obsession with smoothness? Mm. There's something about smoothness, right? Like there are totally plus size models now and mm-hmm. like all kinds of, I don't even think that's the right word anymore. Sorry if that's a rude know. word to use. It was know. not that long ago. But like – there are people of lots of different sizes and lots of shapes, but mm-hmm. everything has to be smooth. There's mm-hmm. no texture allowed on the outside. Mm-hmm. I feel like texture is one of the disqualifiers for sure. me. Of like, I cannot be wearing that bathing suit because of the texture of my skin. Even yeah. maybe even if I was the same size, but everything was like smoothed out. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, there are those things. I don't know if people do this outside of LA, but you can go to places where they put like warm cedar planks over your skin and stuff and it like melts your cellulite so oh. you don't get actually smaller but you're not ripply anymore wow and like and so then you have like skin that is smooth yeah. and somehow even that seems they can make money doing it because we've been sold the messaging that the texture is not going to work yes yes yeah. people can be different sizes but there's still this like air brushing mm-hmm. but yeah just wanting to like this, keep it back just bringing us back to the barbie movie and her whole thing about <laughs> okay, the joke about full body cellulite is so funny. Yeah, but I did feel like, yeah, you mm-hmm. can't get full body cellulite, yeah. Barbie. You have to go on this journey so that you don't get full body. Like, right. no, right. you can't possibly do that. I'm also like, how did they do that? Because Margot Robbie doesn't have cellulite. So like when they show that little patch, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of production you curiosity really? about that. Yeah, <laughs> like, maybe she does. Did they? She might. I mean, we've seen her in a lot of movies. I don't we've know. We've seen her whole entire legs in lots of movies, and I think she don't. Yeah, we'll have to. Hey, Margo, if you're listening, will you let us know? <laughs> Do you have any we cellulite just know if there's all. even a single, <laughs> even just a bit. little yeah. bit. When I asked if we could record, Elaine said, well, sure, as long as it's okay for them to know that I don't have any answers. Like not a single one. I don't have a single piece of advice about this. You do, I though. feel sorry to be even talking about it, partly because like I know – that this is like very dysmorphic. Like what I'm describing Mm. is like not the reality Mm -hmm. of the way that I'm shaped. And I even like, I feel apologetic about even like being the one to complain. Mm -hmm. I also feel like I didn't even do this heroic thing with my body that you guys have all done. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of beautiful messaging around like, these are battle scars. These are marks of this gift of life that, yes. Yeah, but not all of our listeners have given birth either. No, that's true. Yeah. And yeah, but, I, I feel, yeah, it's all to say I'm, yeah. I'm disoriented in this conversation. You're not here to hear yeah. any expertise from me. Yeah. <laughs> what today. I like about Lane sharing this though is that it, it's actually the same thing I liked when I would work backstage at a fashion show and I would encounter these women, um, men too, but the women specifically would talk about it. Like these women are women that you guys would know. You've seen them on ads. They are really famous And they have insecurity about their bodies. And what I didn't feel is, how dare you have an insecurity? Mm. What I felt more was like, whoa, this is universal. Like, wait, so you're telling me if I had your body, the thing that I think I need in order to be happy, I would feel like you and you, yes, you're here and there's a lot of fame and glory (laughs) surrounding this moment, but they didn't exude a lot of peace and confidence like – I am doing great. Mm. They also carried around insecurities. And so if by chance your instinct is hearing Lane and being like, why would she talk like that? I would love to caution you as, as a friend of my listeners 
Because if you're feeling that because Elaine looks a certain way and you think if you looked like that, you wouldn't feel this way, you might. We might. It's mm-hmm. it's about a lot more than the size and shape of our body or yeah. the number on the scale or our pant size or how much we're getting paid to look the way we look. Mm-hmm. It's so much bigger than that, and that's why it's confusing. And that's why for a lot of us who do have kids, it's actually sad to get to the age where the kids start to be aware of their bodies in mm-hmm. a in a way that's insecure. They aren't born like that. It My kids walk around naked and are so happy, and it's so cute, and I love it so much. And there is a shifting point where they start to be aware of their shape, where they start to notice shapes in general, like – oh, that body and this body look different. And what about this? And for me, watching this happen in my own house, I feel a little sad and very responsible to help guide these kids into the healthiest possible relationship they can have with their body. I know that it's ultimately not all mine to do, but there's a lot we can do. And part of it is having honest conversations about the dark thoughts that swirl around and realizing like, wait, you have those thoughts too? Mm. I have it too, but you look different than me or you look the same as me and I thought you would feel better in your skin because you have this, that, and the other thing going for you. I had one woman be like, but you're married. And I was like, oh, that's your thing. You think if you get a a husband, you'll feel better in your body. Yeah. And that wasn't my thing, but also I've had a husband since I was 20 and I definitely didn't feel good about my body that, I mean – I'm thankful for my body. I can I can logically know this body is a good body. It's done good things for me. I'm so happy to be in it. Mm-hmm. And I still daily have to like choose it. I have to choose. I will be grateful for my body. I will be nice to my body. Even like I joke about wanting boobs. You guys know that. And I still do want them. Except for people keep getting sick from their implants that I know. Okay. So then I'm like, dang it. Pause. Oh, tell me. The tiniest number of people ever really? get sick from their implants. Multiple people I know personally are. I need to find this out because yeah. all of a sudden I got nervous about it, <laughs> as if I'm as Do if I'm like on the verge of getting them. How I'm not. many breast implants there are Everywhere. out there roving in the world? Okay, like we got to be clear yeah, we about this. Find out because yeah, yes, totally. Yeah, and, and if you have breast implants you think. and you have strange autoimmune style symptoms that you don't know what to do, you should totally go talk to a doctor about that. That's a very real phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's very loud on the internet right now. It's very loud. It's also like a trending video thing, huh? Uh, Like explants. Absolutely. Yes. But let's just be clear. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. There is so much silicone just like walking around in the world everywhere. (laughs) And it has been for ever. Yeah, that's true. And a bunch uh, of some of those women have suffered in ways that Mm -hmm. they didn't know to Mm -hmm. be like, oh my gosh, this is because there's like a, my body's responding strangely to this thing that is invasive. It's not normal to it. Yeah. Totally. So, you know, keep an eye out, but also like people are going to keep getting breast implants. You could get them. I might. You would probably be fine. be in time. (laughs) And if you fall down well, you should get them out. Get them out. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's more expensive to get them out than get them in. Oh. That's what my friend told me. What a dirty trick. Yeah, I know. Um, But – so so it's all light and fun and I actually might get boobs one day and you'll you'll know, won't you? (laughs) Unless you listen, (laughs) then I'll probably tell you. So it'll be fine. Um, But what I did realize in these recent sexy conversations with Sean, we're not being sexy (laughs) while having these conversations. I'm literally like picking his brain. Sean has this gift um, of taking complicated ideas and simplifying them. He's Mm. just really good at that. And so it's kind of bringing the topic of sexiness to him and like, what do you think about this? And what do you think it would mean for me to feel sexy in my body? And then I was kind of trying to figure out like, what is it that would keep me from feeling that? And I do think that not having boobs and like kind of always being the flat chested one and like I joke about it, but I wasn't the only one joking about it. Like mm-hmm. boys joked about it when I was younger, right? It was it was a thing that almost like I can joke about it now because it is funny and it's just my body and it's they're fine. They did great and they fed my kids and I like them a lot. But I I did kind of equate it to like if you have boobs, you're like the sexier woman and I never got those. So so that never came for me. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I'm, I'm many other things. This was like my rationalization, but like the sexy woman thing wasn't, it felt connected to that in some way. I also know people who had that same thought and they got um, implants and they didn't feel sexy after. Wow. So that also was like, okay, cool. Watching that happen to two people in my life um, was like, oh, okay. So there's more to it than that. Um, but 
there's just, there's like personal insecurities that we feel that we all, it's a universal experience. I went to different countries. I might've talked about this in the previous podcast on this topic where like I was surprised when I went to different countries, totally different cultures, living in jungles. Like these women, their lives looked so different from the ones that I had known here. And yet they also were insecure about their bodies there. I remember watching these young girls like um, measure the size of each other's wrists to one another to see like who in the group was the smallest. Mm -hmm. And I was so struck by that. Like, oh, wow, what? You guys are trying to be small over here? Like also they're just very petite people. So I was very confused. Why are we doing this? And in other countries, they were trying to be pale. Their skin was darker and they were trying to be pale. And yet coming back home to the States, we're trying to be, my friend group who was very white (laughs) was trying to get more tan. And I was like, oh my gosh, we are all trying to be comfortable in our bodies. And the solution continues to be outside of us. Mm -hmm. It's a very rare thing to meet somebody who's just like, yep, this is me. I really like her. (laughs) Isn't she awesome? You know, I take good care of her and sometimes she betrays me and she Mm -hmm. does the thing I wish she didn't, but then we recover. Like what a refreshing thing that would be and how do we become that and cultivate that? And I do think there are a few things that I took on to, to do it. One of the things that I realized early on is when I would go shopping, early on being like, late teens, early 20s, I would go shopping. And whenever clothes didn't fit me right, I would think I was the problem. Mm -hmm. Always. Oh, my body doesn't look right in these pants. Mm -hmm. My body is a problem. And I had this moment where I was like, no, the pants are the problem. No, why do I keep doing that? That is so silly. And it's funny, I'm actually really passionate about this topic because I was raised by two moms, right? So I got a lot of women in my life, Mm. sister, a lot of good friends. I ran this women's ministry um, that was – it was focusing on beauty, identity, and value. And it was women from different cultures and countries and realizing that we all are struggling with the same stuff. And it is – it's like something to get mad about because Mm. it's stealing from our lives. It is not helping in any way. We don't feel better. And so, yeah, that that realization like how – dare these pants try to fool me into thinking my legs are the wrong size when yeah. <laughs> my legs my legs are their size and and yes you can still be like but i'd like to lose some weight after having my baby okay if that's what you would like to do and that's what your body is going to do like that's okay but you don't need to hate your body in the meantime you can feel that discomfort like oh it's hard i don't recognize my body that's hard and I'm sorry. And that's that's like real. You don't have to pretend that's not hard. That's actually hard. The next thing though is you don't have to hate your body for it. You don't even have to hate yourself for it. You didn't fail at anything. Your body isn't failing. And so kind of shifting this perspective of like, how do I have compassion towards the body I'm inside of mm. that's carrying my soul around and engaging with people I love and eating food that's delicious and kissing people who right. are wonderful to kiss? How do I go, okay, for me, I still have this like real stretched out lower belly um, and and there's weight there that just continues to stay there. And what my instinct is to do when I get undressed is to think it's a bad body. To mm-hmm. think like, oh, there it is again. There's there's those cute little boobs who now droop down and there's that belly. And lately, I have been so over it for myself because I'm like, I'm still here. Like, And especially, I have cancer. Like, I, I forget I have cancer and then I say it. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's like a – Yeah. Like, I don't want to be gone. I want to be here. Yeah. And so if being here means being in this body, how dare anybody in this world convince us it's the wrong body? Mm-hmm. That's that's just mean. Like we didn't choose it. Yeah. And the shape that it is, sure we have we have some control over how we care for our body. But if we starve a body or we over-exercise a body, it is a sick body. 
It is mm-hmm. a sick quality of life. We are not well. Mm-hmm. We aren't at full capacity to experience joy, to experience love, to think creatively, to work our best to extend patience to these sweet little kids who are being so tricky sometimes. Like if, if our focus is to be skinny, which it was my focus for so long, you can be really sick and skinny. Mm -hmm. You can, I mean, my sweet sister, she's talked about this openly, so it's not, it's not a secret, but like years ago she was living off coffee and cigarettes. She was very skinny. She was actually she was her perfect skinny as far as like her standard and she was so sick and she wasn't happy and yet skinny was the goal. And then eventually like healthy was the goal and to be healthy and nourished is to eat food and it's even to eat dessert sometimes. That's a really joyful experience when, when you're doing it, not out of shame of like, Oh, look at me defeating my own goals again. But like, here I am with a sweet friend and we're enjoying this dessert that we both really like and the flavor is so nice and we're alive, still here. Like, what a gift, right? And so, I don't know. I I feel the tension that we all feel and I definitely am, am constantly like trying to find the peace between wanting to feel proud of the body that I'm in and also wanting to just let her be and stop bothering her so much and stop being so rude and critical to her because I would never be like that to my children ever. (laughs) Like I can't imagine picking apart my daughter's bodies the way my mind will sometimes pick apart my own, how absolutely cruel. And so, yeah, trying to find that space in between and also realizing that part of it has to do with speaking total life over the women's bodies that are around me. And because it's actually not that hard for me to tap into genuine admiration for other bodies. Like I, it's very easy for me to love on people around me and be like, you look so beautiful and, Mm -hmm. and totally mean it. It's not like flattery where I'm hoping that they'll say something nice back or something. It's like, that's real. And what I found is the more I would do that and the more I'd be like, you look amazing. This, I love this about you. And it doesn't always have to be physical appearance, but because my struggle was this standard where it was like, the only beauty is a beauty that actually isn't real unless you've had surgery and been photoshopped and are looking at the photoshopped image of the woman who had surgery. That is an impossible standard that doesn't even work. And the woman in the picture doesn't even feel that good. That wasn't, that wasn't it. But if I go out onto a street and I just see a bunch of women and I'm like, whoa, look at the sparkle in her eye and look at her smile and look at the way she, I don't know, held her child's hand when she did that. Like what a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. Oh, and physically she's beautiful. That is beautiful. And realizing too, you can find people who are quite attractive and they really aren't nice to be around and it doesn't exude a beautiful energy. And I wouldn't describe them as beautiful, even though they are attractive. But the for me, the word beautiful carries layers and it has to do with uh, what I see, but more so like what I feel about this person that I'm with. And so, yeah, being more empathetic to ourselves, being more verbally encouraging of the women around us, and then also getting to a point where I don't let my people talk badly about themselves and like gush it, like the way women do in a bathroom, we do that. I don't know if you guys know that. Maybe you haven't gone out with your friends in a while, but what what can happen is we all get in front of a mirror and we go, oh my gosh, I look like shit. Oh, my hair looks crazy. Oh my gosh, I look so big. Turns out didn't lose my postpartum weight, <sighs> haven't showered. And, and it becomes this contagious like, oh, you think that looks right. bad? Well, look at me. It's contagious in the same way that like feeling good about yourself can be a contagious energy. And so I've actually stopped my friends and been like, no, no, guys, let's not do it. Like, let's not talk like that because that's not helping. So then it's switching to, you can talk like, hey, will you help me fix my hair? It's like really frizzy and I'm feeling it's here. Of course, you're so beautiful. I love your hair. And if any guy's going to make you feel crappy about your hair, he shouldn't be that close to your eyes anyway. Like <laughs> he needs to back up and move on because he doesn't get it. Like that's productive awareness of the thing that's making you feel insecure. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling really big in my clothes today and it's really a struggle. Will you help me process that? Or will you help me to just like see things the right way? Cause I want to be confident. I have so many conversations with people I love like that, where it's, it's us honestly processing our insecurities with a productive intentional intention. I want to feel better about myself at the end of the conversation. Will you remind me what's true? Sure. Do you want to go for a walk? Should we go for a walk together and we'll just talk about it? 
way better than just carrying around this darkness, this heaviness, and then feeling like to the world, we have to pretend that we're really happy and we don't think about our weight and we hardly think about our appearance. (laughs) And like, did she get fillers? Maybe, but I hope she doesn't talk about it because mm. (laughs) no, we're all struggling with it Yeah, in some way. I'm on a rant. Yeah, never stop. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm just eavesdropping yeah. on you now. Yeah. <laughs> this is the same rant that I do to my own head all the time. Oh my gosh, it's such a good rant. It's such a good rant. Yeah. It's a, a thing that I want to just like carry with me in the moments where you're like, but all of these clothes look bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I just, mm-hmm. everything is going to, when you're like looking at all your clothes and you're like, but they're all going to touch me mm-hmm. and I'm so mad about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Something that any clothes could do in a yeah. moment like that. Yeah. And that happens a lot to these ladies too, mm-hmm. who are in a body that changed a lot. And ladies, it's happening to someone whose body didn't change. So have grace on yourself because it happens to us. It's, you know what? I always bring up Eloise because I'm baffled at how similar our situations are. She came to me recently because she had no clothes. Okay. She has tons of clothes. They are (laughs) overflowing. I did laundry. I can't fit them in her drawer. I'm sending some to her cousin in Colorado. She has clothes. But what she felt was a feeling of like, but nothing feels right. Nothing looks right. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just a little kid probably starting to get some hormones in her that aren't very nice. For you guys who are shifting in your bodies and you who are shifting in your mind towards your body... Sometimes you just need a few go-to pieces that you feel comfortable enough in that you can walk out confidently and not think too much about what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And especially like postpartum friends, buy a pair of bigger pants that feel really nice on you or get like a sweatsuit that's kind of stylish or something that is like, I put this on, I feel good enough, I, I don't know, throw on some lip gloss, some mascara, dry shampoo, whatever it is. And give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. And for us who are not in our postpartum stage, we still go through the same struggle. And our bodies could have not changed that much. It's just our our mind feels like it's changed. Or maybe our body did change for whatever reason. It's again like, okay, this isn't my body's fault. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She is innocent here. She's just a body living life. And I want to decorate her. Oh, here's the other thing that I do when I pep talk myself. There are cultures that are really beautiful at like adorning a woman's body in a lot of colors and beads. And like I could show you pictures of things I've looked at that I just thought was so amazing. And basically they do it as a celebration of her body. Like the boldness, the color, the the um, kind of extravagance of like, of course you're going to look at her when she walks by mm-hmm. um, because she looks fabulous. They don't do it out of like because – because I personally believe I am so fabulous that everyone should look at me. It's more like a cultural, like the woman's body Hmm. is to be celebrated. That's interesting. And so sometimes I think about that as well as like, how could I decorate my own self today in a way that reflects that I am worthy of celebrating, that my body is worthy to be celebrated and that she is good and that we're doing good stuff together. And that even if I'd like to modify some things about her and we'd like to go for a jog, which I pretty much never do, go for a walk. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of walking going yeah, on around here. <laughs> that, it, that it can be out of celebration versus, oh, I don't like this body I'm in. I want to hide. I'm embarrassed. Um, yeah, I think that there's like two things happening at once. We can take care of our body. And if we're feeling really like things got out of control and we need to kind of bring it back, then we do that. But we do it from a place of like, this body is worthy of love. This body is worthy of my own love. And I will be tender and gentle as I do whatever I need to do to make whatever change feels like the right move right now. Mm -hmm. But it's not from a place of like, she's not good enough. So I do this. Like, no, she's going to stay good enough. She's good. It's like you take a $100 bill and you frame it on the wall or you put it on the ground covered in dirt. It's still worth $100. Your body is still good. Our bodies are still good in any in, in whatever state, it's just a matter of what's going to be the healthiest and what can keep us here the longest with the people who are so awesome and want us to be here and we want to be with them. And none of it's easy. Mm. But we shouldn't be so mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good start. Don't, <laughs> don't be mean is a really good start. Mm-hmm. 
Do you think that's what those Spanish women have is a thing of like, no, the the female body is amazing. Yeah. Like full stop. Yeah, I think so. And And maybe it's also like something about like, it's amazing and it's not everything. Like mm. we're not our bodies. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Just be in it. But also like we're in the ocean and we're on the sand and we're with our family and we're eating a boca de uh, like sandwich. And yeah. I don't know. We've been – because of all the stuff we've been fed about our body, the body stuff becomes so big. Mm-hmm. It is so big for me and it's been so big for years. And I think there's something to like the way a kid is in their body. We're like, well, it's just my body. I'm going to color it with markers and walk around naked right. and – it's a body, of course. There's experience. Yeah. It's yeah. Very connected. Yes. What you're describing is like, yeah, it is true. The times that like I forget about the way that I'm presenting are times where I feel either very connected to my environment, mm-hmm. whether it's like with these plants or like at the beach or like mm-hmm. it's just sometimes the skies outside in this neighborhood are so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Just walking around, I'm totally caught up in like, oh my gosh, it's chilly and this sunset is super amazing. Or it's when there's like the neighbors that I feel really cozy with because I have friends who live in my same apartment complex, they just like come over and everyone's just like lounging and mm. everyone's in repose and nobody – these are like none of – I'm not trying to fuck anybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> who am I trying to fuck? <laughs> or impress yeah, or yeah. convince them they to like, like you. Yeah. Or, you know, like there's none of the mm-hmm. – there's mm-hmm. no um, stakes mm-hmm. and conversation is flowing. Mm-hmm. And like when there's – when it's in that kind of connected space mm-hmm. – then I'm not doing the the splitting thing of thinking of my body as separate from me mm-hmm. or separate from others or separate mm-hmm. from nature or like it's – sometimes I'm so aware of it like it's mm-hmm. this thing that's not just part of the scenery mm-hmm. like everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like those times of when I'm really experiencing something mm-hmm. and like am connected, like those are some of the only times when I'm not thinking about it. Yeah, I love or that. Or it just feels like it's, it's yeah, part of the environment, mm-hmm. part I of something that. bigger. Yeah. For me, I'll say this. For me, what I really believe about women is that we are already beautiful. It's like mm-hmm. this underlying belief that I have that it is part of how you were created. I believe beauty is a part of what went into making you in the same way that like flowers are beautiful and they just are. They're just beautiful. And so some of us have this idea that like, well, I will be beautiful when. Yeah. And I I just don't agree. I just think you are already beautiful. We are already beautiful. And we may feel more comfortable in our form when we, whatever, whatever it is for you. But some of it is like, okay, how can I tap into this sense of beauty that I already am, that is just already part of who I am? And even like little babies, you have it where you're like, whoa, like this this is beautiful. This little thing, like what a beautiful kind of magical little being. And it's not like they chose it or they opted in or something. It's just mm-hmm. here they are and it's part of who they are. And yeah. And then there might be a lot of stuff that's like piled onto our beauty that is sticky and kind of makes it hard to see that we need to pull away and figure out. Um, yeah. And it's I, basically people argue with me specifically about weight. Um, it'll be like, well, I will be beautiful when I lose this excess baby weight that I've had for years, blah, blah, blah. And I understand and I and I think like, yes, you might feel more beautiful in your body, but the thing that's been true about you and something that would help you and the way you relate to her, the body you're in, is let her be the beautiful thing. Let her be like, okay, you're beautiful. Like, how do I how do I walk around with a confidence that like, nope, I was just made beautiful. The Spanish woman is like, to to be is to be beautiful and to eat my sandwich and to be with my kids and to jump into the ocean. Like you can't, you could call me not beautiful a bunch of different times and you would be wrong, <laughs> but you could say it loudly. You could write it in a yeah. comment. You could blast it on a cover of something and you'd be the wrong one. Just that's earth shattering. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's it is. And it's like worth a bunch of women just like realizing and sitting around and talking to each other about it and being like, oh, yeah, you're beautiful and I'm beautiful and she's beautiful and she's beautiful. And what she chooses to wear and what she chooses to do with the beauty she's in is her decision. And we can be nice people and Mm -hmm. you can be mad, but you can't be rude. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, treating ourselves with care as just a beautiful thing. 
Wow. Once upon a time, I hosted a conference and it was called The Beautiful Ones and it was for women. And it's because I thought that, that they were already were. So anybody who comes and they're like, well, I can't come. I'm like, well, duh, you can come for you. It's your conference. That's amazing because that's exactly what you've done again in like <laughs> declaring that this is very good mother's going. Uh, well, that's true. That's <laughs> like the theme. It's yeah. uh, it's challenged. You're like even the way that you're presenting resources and mm. nurture and love mm-hmm. challenges the lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, true. All you have to do to come in is be able to step out of the part that's a lie, yeah. which is the idea that I'm not beautiful or that I, I shouldn't be there because I'm not a very mm-hmm. good mother. Yeah. All, that's literally that's all you have to do. If you yeah. can just come over that line, then yeah. that's the only requisite. Yeah. That's so cool. I've never considered that. Yeah. You're I've had, so I've had cool. moms be like, I'm wearing the Very Good Mothers Club sweatshirt and it's so weird because I think people think that I'm a very good mom. And I'm like, I know I feel that same thing, (laughs) but like we also kind of are, but we also know that to be very good is to be good enough. And that's where the podcast name came from. (laughs) But also Mediocre Moms Club. Mm. I just, that's not my club, but Mm. it is like kind of my reality. (laughs) But I'd rather be in the very good one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. I think we did it. We just had a conversation on a podcast. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to think about that all day long and every day. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. Okay. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to hang out with us, join Very Good Mothers Club, the community, the links below. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you there. We host Zoom calls and then a bunch of other amazing people host Zoom calls. The the calls are really valuable. It's a way to connect Mm -hmm. from like the comfort of your own home or office or wherever. Um, And then there's forums and resources and a course if you have a toddler and the toddler has tantrums. Um, she has a course for you. We just have a lot for you and we'd love to invite you in. We have a podcast specific email now. It's very good enough pod at gmail.com. So if you have questions, if you have comments about an episode, if you, any of the links don't work, if you need help, if you have a question that you would like to have answered on a bonus podcast, all communication. If you're trying on pants and you're trying to pick like which ones would be great, we'd love to chime in. Send some photos (laughs) over to very good enough pod, P-O-D, very good enough pod at gmail.com. Oh my gosh. And as always, every way to get a hold of us, including that one is Mm. in the show notes. Amazing. So cool. Okay. We love you. We like you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Just Mm. let it sink in and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.